The two battles collectively known as the Battle of Saratoga were fought September 19th and October 7th, 1777. By then, the Revolutionary War had been going strong for more than two years. The Patriots were struggling against the much larger and better trained British Army. Back in March 1776, the British had pulled out of Boston, the scene of the first major fighting, but then they sent 30,000 troops to capture New York City. During a series of battles that summer, the British won several key victories to seize control of New York City and the surrounding area. The first hint of hope for the Washington came December 26, 1776, when American forces at Trenton, New Jersey, surprised and captured hundreds of Hessian soldiers who were fighting for the British. Another American victory came the following week at nearby Princeton. These American victories were short-lived, however, and Washington's problems soon returned. In 1777, the Continental Army had roughly 3,000 men. Washington pleaded with the states to send militia to help his full-time soldiers, but the states had trouble recruiting men to fight. While Burgoyne was in London in early 1777, seeking King George's support for his plan, Benjamin Franklin was on a similar mission in France for the Patriots. As a U.S. diplomat living in Paris, Franklin was trying to convince King Louis XVI to send aid to the Americans. France and Great Britain had been enemies for centuries, but France did not want to declare war on Great Britain unless the Americans seemed certain of winning their independence on the battlefield. Even so, the French wanted to help. Beginning in 1776, France unofficially sent money through a fake trading company that sent weapons and supplies to the Americans. In addition, four ships were filled with supplies and ready to sail to America. However, when King Louis XVI heard about the American losses in New York in the summer of 1776, he ordered the ships to remain in port. But when Washington scored successes at Trenton and Princeton in December, the French were again eager to help. In early 1777, the four ships carrying the supplies left for the United States. The Americans quickly realized that the more successful they were on the battlefield, the more aid they could expect from France. After the fall of Fort Ticonderoga, Congress had lost confidence in General Schuyler, so Major General Horatio Gates took command of the Northern Army. When he took command in August 1777, the Northern Army was in bad shape. Morale was low and the men lacked food and supplies. Gates began placing orders to get them what they needed and the mood of the camp quickly improved. When Gates first took command of the Northern Army, he only had about 6,000 troops. During late August and early September, more soldiers joined his ranks. Benedict Arnold arrived from Fort Schuyler with about 1,200 men, Colonel Daniel Morgan arrived with another 400, and George Washington sent Gates another 1,500 Continental soldiers. More militia would also answer the call to fight Burgoyne. In early 1777, British Lieutenant General John Burgoyne proposed an invasion of New York from Canada along Lake Champlain and the Hudson River. If his plan worked, the British would effectively control the Hudson River Valley and cut off the northern colonies from the southern colonies. Burgoyne hoped this would force the Americans to surrender, thus winning the war for the British. Burgoyne's plan had one major flaw. It had too many moving parts and relied too heavily on other British troop movements to make his plan work. Unfortunately, General Howe had no plans to move up from New York and help Burgoyne in his campaign. Instead, he sent all of his troops, except for 800 men to defend New York, towards Philadelphia to attack the capital of the United States at the time. Burgoyne was now relying very heavily on St. Ledger to move up from the southeast. St. Ledger attacked Fort Schuyler, which is now in Rome, New York. He was effectively sieging upon the fort when... General Schuyler, who the fort was named after, heard about this and ordered Benedict Arnold to lead a troop of reinforcements. St. Ledger, unaware of the size of Benedict Arnold's troop reinforcements, pulled back and was unable to take the fort. About the same time that St. Ledger was attacking Fort Schuyler, Burgoyne found himself in the hands of another defeat. Burgoyne, running out of supplies, had sent a large troop movement into Bennington, Vermont, to try and gather supplies from the local area. About eight miles outside of Bennington, they were surprise attacked by 1,500 American soldiers, regulars, militiamen, and Native Americans. Running very low on supplies, having faced a few defeats, not sure of St. Ledger's or Howe's involvement in his campaign, Burgoyne was slowly losing confidence. But, a prideful man, he refused to give up. Instead, he continued forward and right into the hands of a further defeat. Burgoyne split his troops into three columns and began his march on Bemis Heights. He was unaware that Morgan had set up a line of defense along Freeman's farm, and they marched right into the range of those riflemen. A battle soon ensued. The battle was fierce and heavy throughout the day. 
late in the afternoon, Burgoyne sent his reinforcements in and heavily outnumbered the American troops. This forced them from the field. The fighting had lasted until dusk, but the Americans finally retreated. After the long day's clash, 65 Americans lay dead on the battlefield, and another 250 or so were wounded or missing. The British claimed a victory of sorts since they controlled the battlefield, but they had paid an even higher price in casualties, 160 dead and more than 400 wounded or missing. The Americans had showed bravery that the British had not expected. Some British soldiers still had trouble accepting the American rebels as worthy enemies, but the fighting at Freeman's Field helped change that opinion. Before the battle, the British military felt that the rebels of America would be an easy pushover and be a quick victory. With the first battle over, although the British considered it a victory, with the heavy losses, wounded and missing, the British military realized that the rebels were no easy pushover. Early on October 7th, 1777, Horatio Gates sent Colonel James Wilkinson out to scout the situation. From the woods around the heights, Wilkinson could see British troops making their way towards Bemis Heights. Wilkinson quickly returned to the camp and reported his finding to Gates. Gates prepared some of his men to meet the British. Around noon, Gates heard the first shots of the day. Benedict Arnold volunteered to scout out the battle lines. Gates reluctantly agreed, and so he sent General Benjamin Lincoln along to make sure that Arnold didn't do anything risky. When Arnold returned, he told Gates that he must send a strong force. Gates, not liking being told what to do, he banned Arnold from the taking part in the battle. Even so, Gates took Arnold's advice and sent out more troops under the command of General Enoch Poor. With the line collapsed, Burgoyne and his men had to retreat, with Gates and Arnold in heavy pursuit. Soon, Burgoyne found himself completely surrounded by Gates' men with no options for escape. Discussing with his leaders, Burgoyne knew that he had to surrender. The decisive victories in the Battle of Saratoga were a sign to France that it was time to step in. They had been sending supplies and monies to the American revolutionaries, but now they lent their full support. The Battles of Saratoga told the British military that this would be a much different war than they expected and that they may not have such an easy win. But the more important thing to consider is the psychological effect that the losses had on the regular military men of the British Army. They went into these battles and this war considering that the rebels were unarmed or poorly armed, poorly trained, and would be no match against such regimental forces of the British military. After these defeats, they realized that the American revolutionaries were fierce fighters, more trained than they expected, because they did not consider the fact that many of these men happened to have fought during the French and Indian War and had military training. Many feel that the Battle of Saratoga was a turning point in the American Revolutionary War. This could be for three possible reasons. The first, the decisive victory showed that the American Continental Army was willing to fight was willing to stand their ground and could and would give sounding defeats against the British. Two, France was waiting for an opportunity to enter into the war, but wanted to wait for a decisive victory on the Continental Army's part to prove that this would be a good backing for the army. And three, the psychological effect of the defeat on the regular army in the British military. Going into the battles, they felt that they had the upper hand with their training and their weaponry. But then to find that they could be defeated had a psychological blow, which hurt their chances of continuing on with the fight. 